If you're looking for something half-ton towable with a private bedroom and you don't want any guests, no bunks, you're gonna like what you see here. Hello and welcome to Coldwater, Michigan, everybody here at Bish's RV at my hometown store and behind us, 2023 updates on the 22 SW uh, Cherokee Alpha Wolf and it is looking better than ever. Um, they have, they've richened up the look of this thing both inside and out. Not, not as obvious on the outside, but the inside like very quick, like, ooh, I like the look of that. Um, some of the 23 updates on this, I think you're really going to enjoy. They've gone to a, uh, a tankless water heater system. So basically, if you want to be able to like, you know, run hot water in the sink and take a hot shower or take multiple hot showers back to back, nobody has to worry about taking a cold shower, which could have happened a, a little more commonly last year. And with those things, as long as you got battery power and you got propane, you got hot water and considering they've doubled uh, what they were doing with solar since last year and improved the solar charge controller in case you want to expand on that further you should be able to have battery going on this thing all the time they've also revised the seating situation on this one a little bit it's still a theater seat on a no neck record situation straight across from the entertainment center but they they went away from this goofy little pedestal swivel table thing they had before and just went with a, a free-floating folding leg table that is hard to say three times fast now it still has a couple hicks, uh, hitches in its giddy up, and I'm going to share the good with the bad with you as we go, and I'll volunteer one of those right now. It's still a camp queen bed, and I know that that's an instant deal breaker for some folks, so if you appreciate the way that we show you the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's step inside and see what else is new. So the, the first thing that struck me on this one is this like warmer, richer wood tone that they're using in here, and it looks like they've really pretty much standardized that across the entire Cherokee family. So like, you know, the stick and tin Cherokees, the gray wolves, the wolf pups, uh, these alpha wolf, arctic wolf, wolf pack. They're basically all using the same look right here. It's almost that like classic honeycomb looking uh, wood tone that personally, it speaks to me very, very much. Because when I was a kid and when I was camping with my parents and my grandparents, you know, uh, this is this is what campers looked like. So it just kind of feels like home to me. And it's sort of funny. It's like, what is old is new again. Like when I was a, a 90s kid, these pants called flares came out. Well, anybody would look at them and say, uh, so you're wearing bell bottoms? Like, no, they're flares. Shut up, old people. And it's like, no, no. okay. Anyway, sorry. Um, the 15,000 BTU air conditioner still standard up here to give us some uh, extra cooling power. Um, and the uh, the larger 12 volt DC compressor fridge also still standard to maximize our cold storage capacity um, and the uh, you know the travel safe faster cooling function if you're in a hot climate especially when the fridge is buried in a slide like that it'll keep up far far easier now uh, over here you can see that we've got a nice big plush theater seat on the corner of boardwalk and park place staring straight toward the entertainment center. And boy, howdy, they've got enough cup holders in that thing. You could you could have two people, two fist in it, all night in that thing. <laughs> they are still doing some carpet in the flooring. Some people prefer carpetless. I personally am among them. But there are a lot of people who said, Josh, what is your, your deal with carpet in the slide? Like, I like it. I like to have my warm, or my feet feel, uh, you know, warm and toasty when I'm sitting in there. Okay, well, I can respect that. And that's one of the reasons I like having so many different RVs. Now, if you like a layout like this, but you prefer carpetless, um, uh, the, the Salem Hemisphere, the Wildwood Heritage Glen that we carry called a 22, I believe, RBHL, will be basically the same floor plan, but carpetless. The Rockwood 2511. Um, you know what? I'll try to leave you some links in the video description. I don't expect you to remember the alphabet soup of model numbers that I'm rattling off at you over here. So the Entertainment Center, again, straight across from the theater seat over here. Um, and this RV does suffer from a little bit of a lack of campsite windows, so that viewing window in the entry door is very welcome to help uh, overcome that. Obviously, we got ourselves that little electric space heat and uh, Tootsie Toaster, or if you are uh, standing uh, facing the theater seat with your backside toward it, that could be a backside burner, <laughs> a bum burner, as it were. Um, Sealed edge thermofoil countertops are something that a lot of the RV industry has really uh, adopted. And it's really due to um, Forest River and, and Coachman, really, that they've, they've become so, so common, so, so popular. Mm, sorry about that. A little construction dust caused me to sneeze or something. I don't know. Anyway, opening everything up, giving you a look at all the storage over here. There's like, uh, when that refrigerator door closes, there's a pocket underneath the pantry in the slide. I'm kind of curious... What would you folks do with that? Now, some other details as we go here. 
We have a, uh, a black stainless skirted farm sink, which I think just looks absolutely smexy and amazing. Give you a look at that big walk-in pantry tainment center over there. Um, that is a, an excellent place. I think I would also find a way to incorporate a few more coat hooks or something into that and turn that also into like a combination closet pantry. And a couple of those little um, organization tension rods to help keep stuff from falling out is going to be welcome there. Now, their entertainment system has changed. Like if you're looking at this, you don't see the AM FM stereo that they always used to have. Instead, what you're going to see from the Cherokee family this year is this little guy. And basically, what you do is you will literally just like Bluetooth link your phone or whatever to the actual RV speaker system. So some people are going, wait, what? Think of it like this. Forget that we're in a camper. You probably understand what it's like if you want to Bluetooth link your phone to a portable speaker or like your vehicle and listen to music. You know what you get that, right? Well, this is basically the exact same thing, except you're, you're Bluetoothing to the camper and using it like a Bluetooth speaker, essentially, is what we're looking at here. Um, now, I do like that they give us a full overhead cabinet storage space. I love this big campsite viewing window over here. You can see how there's household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. This is, however, a camp queen, a short queen bed with plenty of room for a true queen. So I would certainly prefer it to be a true queen from the factory, but it's not. The good news though is if that was going to be a deal breaker for you, all we have to do is just swap in the mattress of your choice. Now I would like to give you a look at the storage that does exist below the bed down there, but they are only putting one gas strut on that bed lift system, which unfortunately is not enough to even handle that uh, backbreaker death wafer of a mattress that you get in most RVs. And as a result, the storage doesn't want to hold itself up. So is there storage below the bed? Yes. Can I easily demonstrate it today? No. I hope you appreciate <laughs> the brutally candid way that I try to go about this stuff because I understand how much money RVs are. I don't spend my money any differently than you. And that's the kind of stuff I would want to know before I went pulling the trigger on something. Now, uh, taking a look at uh, over here in our seating situation, let's close those little zebra shades up. You can kind of have as much or as little light as you want. There is a free-floating Dinofa table included with this now. Admittedly, you are leaning forward to eat at that thing, but I tend to lean forward when I eat regardless. Um, and those are uh, obviously, you know, double theater recliners right there. So, And they're wall huggers, so you don't have to wrestle that thing away from the wall. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at this thing. These are even heat and massage, which you don't commonly find in a in a class like this and we'll say like a half ton class that's something you, you're not oh, oh, oh god i ran into the wall behind me there's a door there who put that there what a stupid place to put a, a door all right now if you get real down low here and you look at that theater seat it looks kind of like that old thx commercial where the speaker's blowing the guy away and he has to catch his drink before it slides off the stand that was thx right i always wanted to call it memorex but i think it's thx i think i finally remembered that correctly but yeah you're staring straight across from the entertainment center here slapping whatever tv you want a lot of factories no matter what tv they include somebody says it's the wrong one so they let you pick your own you want a smart tv you want a basic tv you want no tv you do the tv that works for you if i'm being ultra picky I would like one little light up here, but I could also just put one of those little stick-on motion sensitive lights or something over there. That's not, it's not gonna stop me from camping necessarily. A couple cool things over here. Um, upper left corner, we've got our voltage meter, which is basically like, uh, you know, it's your, your fuel gauge for your batteries. Down on the left below that, that is our um, tankless on-demand water heater control. And then all the way down, we've got our uh, in-command system right here, which you can link to off your phone if you're so inclined, which is kind of neat. But you don't have to. You still just have switches for everything, you know. My grandma had switches. Uh, whew, I saw her use one of those uh, on one of the other kids one time, and she put the fear of Jesus into me. She never had to take a switch into me because I realized that there were consequences for my actions. I'm not necessarily condoning physical violence against children or anything like that, but the fact is, it was effective. You saw the space around the toilet. You see the space around the, uh, or the storage, rather, over here in that uh, awesome bathroom uh, linen cabinet. 
plenty of space there for your, your toiletries and whatnot. Big medicine cabinet in this thing, too. That's something that Cherokee Group is very good about big sinks where you can actually wash your face in a big cabinet. Some people may prefer a different sink faucet. The good news is that's stuff that could be swapped out. Now, I don't know if you saw a little bit of this in the uh, the reflection in that mirror there, but you do not have to upgrade the fan of this. It's, it's funny to me that a very budget-sensitive Cherokee RV includes a better vent fan than a lot of quote-unquote luxury fifth wheels. It's one of the things I, I, I borderline call them best-in-class bathrooms because they do some things very, very well here. Now, that is a six-and-a-half-foot ceiling. Um, so my head at over six foot tall does have to be in the bubble since for plumbing code, you do have to step up in the shower. And if I see something, I say something. I want to acknowledge this. I'm not blind to the fact that that is wavy and looking like bacon at the bottom. And I don't love the look of that. I think that that probably could have had a little bit more attention paid to it. And that's probably something that we're going to have to address here uh, among our team. The good news, what people don't realize, that's not act like people see that. Like, oh God, it's going to leak. And keep in mind, first of all, I'm not trying to justify what I'm seeing here. I'm trying to explain. People see that and think, oh, it's not sealed. You need to put a, a, a bead of caulk or something around that. You actually don't want to do that. Here's a little pro tip for you. Preventative damage pro tip. What you don't realize is this shower pan has like a four inch lip up behind it. And then the shower surround paneling layers over top of that. That is designed on purpose in case somehow, some way, you got water up behind that shower surround paneling, and I'm gonna pan you up here with the backlight. You, you see how it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Well, it's not easy for water to get back there, but somehow if it did, that would still give it a way to dribble and bleed out into the shower pan and then harmlessly down the drain. So don't seal that up. That ugly bacon looking spot should have been done better. We're gonna have to take care of it here at our dealership, but it's not actually a water damage concern. The more you know. Now, still in the bathroom here, I've actually taken the time to close up the slide to show you this thing in what I call road mode, so you can see what kind of travel accessibility you have. The doors on our right, we're in the bathroom, so potty stop access is uh, very possible here. It's also very snack-tastic, because we can get to our kitchen stuff, but you are pretty much losing access to the bedroom. Now, if you're super skinny, maybe you can slide through there, but I know that I cannot. This is a cable-driven slide system, so if you want to open it partially to squeeze through there, you could, but it's not something you should leave partially deployed like that. And I keep running into every single wall and every single thing. So I'm gonna get out here, and I do believe it's high time we started taking a look at everything outside. And starting right up front here, if you weren't aware, Alpha Wolf is basically the travel trailer segment of the Arctic Wolf fifth wheel series. So um, although not identical, they, they're about 99% the same DNA, just one, they run on different chassis effectively. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is I have always given them uh, personal points for curb appeal. I think that they absolutely have all, all that smex appeal. They went with a maximized power awning on this too, uh, with lighting of course, but on a little trailer like this, you know, depending on where the windows line up sometimes, that can be a trick. They really threaded the needle fantastically on this one. Power tongue jack on the front, doing the heavy lifting for us so we don't have to, the tennis crank elbow, you know. And as the big giant decal that is triggering my OCD because it's not nearly centered on the baggage door indicates, this has their factory standard juice pack. Now they have doubled that as compared to last year. Last year by default, it was 50 watts of solar up on the roof. Now it is 100. You'll actually see it's a pair of 50 watt panels because I'm going to get you up to the roof in just a minute here. Um, one of the other things you might notice, and they are actually, they're still on the fence if they want to continue to do this for the rest of the year. Um, if you look at the windows, last year they weren't tinted at all. This year, if you notice, they have like a mirror sort of skin on them, and I think it looks phenomenal, but it also, like every fingerprint, every raindrop, it shows everything. So I guess, let me ask you, and let me get this feedback back to the factory. Do you like that mirror window look or not? You let me know. Now over here, we got uh, Uncle Gary's drunken leash latch, just in case he ties one on and you gotta make sure he doesn't wander through Aunt Edna's uh, campsite half naked at night again. We don't want another debacle like we had in 2006. <laughs> no, sir. Now, they did a cool thing here. In the inside kitchen countertop, where it was like an L shape, there's a big chunk of counter space, that, or uh, under the counter space, rather, you just can't really get to or utilize or access. So they uh, utilize that very Cherokee uh, <laughs> reading uh, mini camp kitchen out here. So you got dad's medicine cabinet, you have a nice maker. It's not a full-on sink, 
But what you do have in here, little cold water sprayer port so that you can keep water for the ice maker and maybe, you know, rinse your hands off. But that is a dog dish. Flip it out there. Um, again, I'll tell you the good with the bad as we go. And of course, there is a propane quick neck below it. I love the location of the outside speakers. I like how they're down at, uh, at like head level or if you're taller like me, they're they're resting at your chesticles. <laughs> um, the uh, stable steps making another uh, return here. I don't think. I think at this point in the marketplace, stable steps are pretty much here to stay for the foreseeable future. Now on the back, you've got that cargo rack and a spare tire. Cherokee has finally standardized their spare tire. They just said, listen, you know, it, it's just silly for us not to do it anymore. I, I think it's high time we just standardize that. Now, if you're noticing something they were missing last year was any level of roof access. They they uh, they, they totally even removed the, the prep inside the wall for a uh, roof access ladder. Well, if you look up top there, you see that little bracket and you see that these can now be, um, uh, like you could utilize a, a portable telescopic extension ladder like you saw right there. Now, that was my ladder. That was not the ladder. Uh, there's no ladder included from the factory at this camper. If that's all you need to go camping, let us know. We can make that happen. Taking a look up there at that fully walkable roof, which now the fact that they give me a way to get up to the roof for you, I can actually prove that it's fully walkable by walking around up there. And you see that um, 100 watt factory solar package now. Now, um, just like they did in Wolfpack and Arctic Wolf, I think, yeah. They have um, bulked up their charge controller that theoretically could handle up to 500 watts of solar. Understand though, if you do that, you will need to, um, like upgrade some of your wiring gauges and whatnot. From the factory by default, uh, if you want to expand on it, you, you're gonna have to bulk up on wiring. So kind of keep that in mind. And again, they've gone to the tankless water heater here. And this is something that I'm learning more about, but there are different varieties of these. They went with a 42,000 BTU so that it, you can like, you know, run a sink and a shower at the same time instead of one or the other. You see the full outside utility shower there. Uh, there's also a black tank flush. But look at this key little detail. Now those valve handles, by the way, those valves are basically open right now, but you notice how you don't see the actual blade valves? They're contained inside of the underbelly enclosure right here. But again, I always try to be fair. One thing that I see very commonly on this floor plan is that this is a dual sewer hookup. This is a two stage um, like uh, outlet. If you look under the belly, just in front of the tires, you see that's where your kitchen gray tank empties, whereas in the back, that's where your black and your gray empties, which is also why this one uh, reads on paper with such a dramatic uh, gray tank capacity as compared to everything else. Much better look at those mirrored windows over here, holy cow. And did you notice the slides are slide awning ready? Keep in mind, if you don't see those slide awning prep brackets, it doesn't necessarily mean that the RV cannot be uh, outfitted with a slide awning. Many still can. Uh, slam latch doors, magnet holdbacks, nice little convenience features, and a big full passer that is nicely, nicely finished. If I'm just gonna be nitpicky, cause there's nothing to really complain about too much down here, I just sorta wish that battery disconnect switch was up higher so it wasn't down low where shifting cargo could get to it. But man, other than that, I think that they are putting together a, uh, it's a really dollar for dollar, pound for pound smart package right here. Um, it's not the most expensive trailer. It's not the most highly outfitted trim package trailer, but everything is kind of in line. It's a high value kind of product that I, in, in my opinion anyway. But again, I've asked you for some feedback on some of the stuff. I'd love to hear from you folks. Leave me some comments and I'll see what kind of blanks I can fill in for you. Now, they are certainly not the only ones making this floor plan. Uh, Wildwood, Rockwood, all the woods <laughs> make a floor plan like this. So, <laughs> so stupid. What I will do is I'll leave you some links in the video description uh, as that kind of indicates up there where you can check for pricing and availability. Um, and you can also see what might be similar to this, uh, some other videos that I might have recorded in case you want to comp shop a little bit and see what else might be out there. So if you, uh, again, appreciate how we share the good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. That's super original. I like that. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.